Coming up, we walk you through building two custom machines for a local LAN party on this episode of the Hardware Asylum Podcast Extras, featuring Dennis Garcia and Darren McCain. As we're working on this podcast, we are getting ready to go to a LAN party. LAN party. That's okay. right. So we will be attending the Boise LAN, and by the time you hear this, that LAN will be in full swing or history. Actually, yeah, it'll be history, I think. So I thought it'd be kind of interesting to talk about preparations for the LAN party, but more specifically, I know that Dennis has been working on a LAN party build, a new gaming machine. Yes, a new gaming... Well, I'm working on a couple of gaming machines. And truth be told, every LAN party that we've gone to, I've built a new machine. For the selfish reason of I don't want to take my main machine to a LAN party for, you know, security reasons. Well, this one's a little bit different because I know normally when you piece together a machine, we're doing it with whatever we have kind of laying around the shop, if you will. Uh So it becomes a bit of a Frankenstein machine with all the different review products that we haven't gotten rid of, haven't burned out, overclocking, or, you know, something along those lines. Yeah, and admittedly in the past, we'd always talk about your builds. And that's true. Well, at least it wasn't the last time because I built, I think if I recall, a new gaming PC for my kids. Mm-hmm. And this time around, both of my machines are still going strong. And we've talked a little bit about those changes over time. But this time, yeah. I want to know about you because Me? you have big piles of hardware. But I know you made some interesting design decisions. So walk us through these two machines. Okay. So the first machine, I will, well, I'll talk about mine. The Let's one, do that. The one I'm going to take with me. Uh, it's going to be um, Fantex Evolve. I, I love that case. The Mantex Evolve, Evolve is a great case. And in fact, there are a couple different variations of that case out on the market, if I'm not mistaken. Well, it's a it's a modders case because a lot of the people that build in it claim that it doesn't cool very well. And I would happen to admit that it doesn't have really good cooling in the front. It doesn't have really good cooling in the top, which is where you could put a radiator. And it has one fan in the back. So a lot of the modifications for this case are just to put more cooling slots in. And, you know, that's, it's the design of the case. It's supposed to be flat and looks great. And I'm going to say it does look awesome, but, um, some people claim it doesn't cool. Well, I think it's fine. Well, and we have to admit that when we go to a land party, our purpose for being there maybe is a little different these yeah. days because Showy. we come as, uh, as supporters mm-hmm. and we are providing, um, I guess an opportunity to show off, right? Yeah. We want to show off, uh, if you don't have a hardware pile, you know, there's <laughs> no reason to, I guess. So, for instance, uh, Darren's machines were always uh, water-cooled and LED-lighted. Mm-hmm. I went after the style aspect. So I picked the Fantex Evolve, tempered glass side panels, pretty case. It got the Editor's Choice Award on Hardware Asylum. And inside it, I would pick uh, an X99 board off of the shelf. I think the last time I did the... EVGA Classified X99. A great board. But, great board. But why X99? That's an interesting design decision right off the bat because that's not a really, well, not the most current platform at least. No, it's not the most current platform, but it is the platform that I don't have actively on the test bench. Ah. So, for instance, I could take an X299 because I have two of those processors. I have some really great boards, including... Um, a Apex Rampage from Asus. Nice. Great board. I could put a processor in that, put memory and all sorts of stuff. I have LGB LED lights. But, you know, when you put one of these machines together, it's not to build it on Thursday, use it until Sunday, and take it apart on Monday. I don't really have that kind of time. <laughs> well, yeah. And that's hard on hardware because if you're not careful, you can easily damage something every time that you handle it, especially when you're adding and removing hardware. Yeah. Like, uh, for instance, the last machine I built for the Boise LAN, it stayed together for three months before I took it apart. And if I have my X299 system in there, I can't use it to test hardware. So X99 uh, LGA uh, 2011 with my... Haswell? Yeah. 
as well. <laughs> you, you don't sound so sure of yourself. That yeah, I know. It's one of the, it's the 5,000 series CPU. It's in a box right now. So there you go. Mm -hmm. So you are going with a five series, not a seven series. No, not with seven series. Any reason behind that? Seven series is X299, sir. Ah. X99, man. But I feel like you're hitting a really good sweet spot that I would normally be looking at mm -hmm. for a bang for your buck processor and motherboard. So I find that a really interesting decision. Yeah. Well, and you know, admittedly, again, I have, you know, mountains of hardware, right? And that's the board system that is my favorite right now. So I'm going to pick an X99. I might, oh, I might actually go godlike this time. Ah, sweet. Yeah. So I can get the, the, uh, the first motherboard that had RGB LEDs on board. Well, you do have that windowed case. Yeah, I do have the windowed case. I can match it with uh, probably some HyperX Predator memory. It's 3000 series. No, not 3000 series. 3000 megahertz. Nice quality four channel kit. Probably use a thermal take all in one 280. So I'll have 240 millimeter fans well, on let, it. Let's step back to the memory because that's pretty fast memory. And in the main this time around, we talk a lot about the sweet spot for memory. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to these out of order, that might be worth going and checking out. Mm -hmm. But that's not an RGB setup, is it? No, it's not. It's the standard Predator, you know, straight, no light memory. Okay. Um, so and, an interesting choice. Are we looking at performance, stability? What, what are we going with? It's mostly performance. It's the fastest four-channel kit of memory that I have that isn't split across two channel kits. Very nice. So I could go with um, an RGB kit from Guile, but it's basically a dual channel kit. It's not a quad channel kit. So the the way that they test memory, they test them in the batches that they're going to sell them in. So if it's a dual channel kit, they test two modules at a time and they do the speeds that way. With a quad channel kit, they test all four modules together because of latency issues between the memory and the controller. So they have to have all the memory in the machine at the same time while they're qualifying it, so, which also allows the memory to run faster. So if I take two of those chips or two of those modules, sorry, and put them in like a KB Lake system, they will run faster than they will in a quad channel engine. Interesting. So will the X99 run them at full speed? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. Very cool. So we were just starting to talk about the cooling solution. So bring that by again. Oh, it's, I'm probably going to go simple with an AIO. Uh, I have a Asetek branded, well, actually it's an Asetek manufactured Thermaltake branded 280 all in one. It's got some ring fans on it so I can get a little bit of light going on. Got to have the bling with the windows. Um, I would go all in one or not all in one, sorry, DIY where, you know, I have almost all of the components to put together a uh, DIY water loop, similar to what we put in Darren's machine. Sure. However, I've been um, a little bit pickier with my components. Why not something a little more modular like the Ice Bear, for example? Oh, the Ice Bear might be fun. Oh. Oh, see, now you're making me think. <laughs> um, Let's talk pros and cons real quick. Uh, the pro of going with the Ice Bear is that I could... Um, it's modular, so I could put more than one radiator in there. So I could actually have top radiators and front radiators. But again, I'm only cooling the CPU, so I definitely don't need that much cooling. The block itself is a lot taller because it has an actual pump res built into it, whereas the Asetek brand is a pump block. There's no reservoir. In terms of ease of installation, the Asetek is quicker. Uh, it's a lower profile, so it'll really make the inside of the case look a little bit nicer. And RGB, right? Yeah, I have the RGB lights. So I'll probably go with the uh, the thermal take one, but I don't know. You got me going on the Asetek, or not the Asetek, but the Ice Bear. Sorry. The Ice Bear. Can't even talk now. I uh, do love the performance of the Ice Bear, but arguably it is a little bit higher maintenance install. Although not like a do-it-yourself, of course. Well, no, not at all. Uh, let's see. Um, hard drives. The last LAN party, I did two of the HyperX uh, SSDs, the red ones. And they look great. I have to admit, I was a little bit jealous yeah, of the pretty red SSDs. And the back mounting against the window was really classy, too. Yep. What and case it, was that? That was the Evolve. Ah. I did the Evolve last time. Oh. It was awesome. It just clicked that, yeah, that would be twice in a row. So I know you like the case. That's mm -hmm. a pretty high recommend. Yeah. Actually, that case is going to be the modding project this summer. That's the plan. So I'm going to be taking that bad boy apart. I'll be taking uh, the Dremel, cutting some slots in. Or find somebody with a laser cutter. I'm not sure yet. And then uh, 
repainting it. We're going to be doing some uh, multicolor instead of just Ooh. a solid white or solid orange. Pushing the envelope a little bit on the custom paint. I like it. Yeah, I might as well show off if I know how to do this stuff, right? Sure. Okay. So you haven't talked power supply, and I know that power is supply. always an interesting choice. Yeah. So power supply, um, believe it or not, I have a, you know, for the lack of another metaphor, a stack of 1200 watt power supplies. So oh, what a problem to have. I know. First world problems, right? So I'll probably just grab one of those, drop it in there. I'm likely the Silverstone. Yeah. Right? Oh, well, that's I, a platinum, right? Yep. It's platinum. Um, might as well go platinum, right? Sure. If you got it. Yeah. And, uh, the other platinum ones I have, I have one from Gigabyte, and it's orange. It has an orange fan, which would be nice, but the Evolve has a power supply shroud, so you're not going to see what mis- what PSU is in there. I have to admit, I've always liked that one, but we couldn't find a good complementary color for it. Yeah, it's almost like you want to take it apart and put a different fan in that power supply, the Gigabyte one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or even something RGB so you have some control over the color. Yeah. I was thinking like something with a white fan maybe and, I don't know, ring lighting? You like the white fans. I oh, do. I got it. I got it. Halo lights. Yeah. Halo. We can use some halos from Fantex and put them in there. Very nice. Yeah, I don't know, though. That might be a bit much for as low-key as you're going with this build. Yeah, well, low-key, right? <laughs> um, and then a video card. You know, that's a challenge. So you don't have one, so you're going with the onboard, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that in an X99, unfortunately. No, I believe um, I'm probably going to go back with the EVGA 1080 Classified. Very interesting. Now, going back, I know that's a little hurtful for me, but Mm -hmm. because that is such a great combination. And the fact that you have a classified, I think, is going to give you the bling factor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really what's going to drive it. And you get a few RGB lights in there. Um, I could go with a... A 1070 Ti Amp Extreme, you know, the Zotac one we talked about on nice. the Nice, and that's last a great-looking card with a heck of a power supply, oh, or at least a heat sink, rather. It's a freaking monster. I am worried, because it's a two-and-a-half-slot cooler, that it won't fit in the vertical mounting. I'm no. going to try to put in a vertical mount in that case before the uh, LAN party. Very cool, because that is going to be kind of a neat light mod, right? So mm-hmm. not a lot of heavy modding going on, at least this build. No, not so much. Uh, but basically, that's the whole system. After that, I'll pair it with a 24-inch monitor, some Epic Gear mouse and keyboard, which are some really great gaming parts that I reviewed. Uh, they and they also come with a really awesome case to carry them. If I'm not mistaken, those were from the last LAN party too, so I think um, those are starting to grow on you. I like them just because... Uh, the case it just might your um, the battle box from creative that you use for all your stuff it's a great lamp party setup and it looks fantastic lastly as you know we've been talking about headphones lately mm-hmm. speakers headphones what are we running for sound we'll be running the creative h5s paired with the amp deck that goes along with them very nice so an external amp deck mm-hmm. external like, amp deck and great setup yeah the i love the headphones they're awesome they do great surround sound Admittedly, at the Boise Lands, I don't get a lot of time to game because, again, since we support the LAN party, I tend to do some events there. So I'll be up doing like some giveaways and some overclocking and, you know, handshaking with people, you know, that oh, kind of thing. All that fun stuff. All right. Now you mentioned a second build, though. Yeah. So gonna, share that with us. I'm going to be putting together a second build for a family member. And, and I, you know, I tried to. Just grab stuff off the shelf, right? <laughs> well, of course, because you got the stuff. I got the stuff. And I was going to go with a, a Z270, but then I had mentioned that the new processors were out, and they were called Coffee Lake. And oh, that'll teach you. Yep. And say, like, oh, well, let's go Coffee Lake. So now we're buying a Coffee Lake processor. So you didn't have a good Coffee Lake processor in the lab? Is that what happened? It, not yet, no. You know, when Coffee Lake was released and the Z370, the processors were in short supply. And I had that same problem when Skylake came out. And it took like five months before the supply caught up to the point where I could get a processor. So this is a good excuse to get one into the lab, I see. Yes, exactly. And then we got the uh, Asus Z370 Strix. Nice. Which is a very nice board. I think we've talked about that one before. Yeah, it's a built. It's the gaming edition that's built similar to the Apex uh, boards that I reviewed before. They're just more consumer focus so they have um the uh, ornate heatsink covers and the io shield 
Nice. And of course, obviously the Aura lighting effects. Very that, nice. That pair well with uh, some G skill memory, which we got as well. So we've got some Trident Z 3200 RGB memory. So all of this makes me think it must be going in a windowed case. Yeah, we're going to match that up with the EVGA DG77, which is a case that I recently reviewed on Hardware Asylum. It's white. Oh, nice. That'll work great with the lights. Yeah, tempered glass on three sides. Uh, two of the sides are actually frosted white, which I I didn't really like that too much, but it kind of gives it a, a nice shine that you don't normally get on a case. Well, at least you won't have to worry so much about prettying up the cabling, maybe? No, not so much. You won't see any of the cables because of the frosting that's on there. Well, there you go. You only have to pretty up the cabling in one build then. Yep. Uh, let's see. We're going to do an all-in-one, uh, just a generic Asetek cooler that's in there. I have some first-generation Thermaltake ring fans, some RGBs. Nice. So we'll put those in there. They're only 120 millimeter, but I have, I think it's four of them. Maybe it's only three. Um Put those in the case and just kind of keep it cool. Uh, cool with lights and also some airflow. <laughs> gotcha. The video card's going to be pretty cheap, just a 1060. And we're going to do a Samsung 960 Pro NVMe oh, drive. So lots of speed there. Now that's uh, onboard. Yep, it's the onboard. M.2. Onboard M.2. There will be a, a rotational storage drive for like movies and stuff like that, but that'll probably go in after the LAN party. And then power supply is just going to be a generic 750 that we have laying around. Nothing with lights in that build? Nope. Although the motherboard has lights. So we'll probably turn those on so that they're cycling around. And once the lights go down at the LAN party, it will light up pretty well. Very nice. And then uh, after that, we can add as many lighting strips as we want because the ASUS boards support, I think it's four strips on board. And then you can daisy chain a couple off of that. Now, that'll be nice when it's going off of there. And oh, yeah. It'll be lights galore. I like the uh, the white case with the frosted glass as a base for the lighting. I think that looks really sharp. Yeah, it it's one of those uh, design ideas that people don't explore too often because manufacturers go after just one color, and that's it. Uh, Thermaltake was experimenting with the Snow Edition cases where they were kind of a white and blue sort of accent. And I believe they sell well enough that they keep bringing them back, but they're more of a limited edition. Yeah, they seem to come in in like one run a generation. And I've mm -hmm. done a couple builds in those too, and I find that they tend to catch people's eyes. But we aren't seeing really the wide gamut of cases like we used to see, especially Thermal Take used to do this in NZXT where you'd get a wide range of cases, which is much easier to do when you're basically all plastic designs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Silverstone actually is doing white cases as well. But again, they're mostly the bezel. They do uh, paint the insides of them on some, but it's not a full thing. It's like the p power supply shroud might be white and the rest of the case is black, you know, that sort of stuff. Okay, so I think we've talked about the RAM. The, oh, you know what we haven't talked about is, are you doing an all-in-one cooling solution? Yeah, it's the Asetek cooler. We're just going to pick a generic. Uh, the Coffee Lake processors are not much hotter than a KB Lake, so we can get away with just a, a 120. Maybe there will be a, a 240 or something like that in there, but I don't want to do anything larger because of the fans that we'll be matching with it. Now, I want to also come back and talk about the 1060 because I think that's an interesting choice because I know that you have some 1070s and 1080s in the lab. Mm -hmm. So why 1060? Oh, that's a good question. It has uh, some interesting answers, and it's kind of twofold. One, uh, we can't buy anything faster. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, that that's, that's cost prohibitive at this point to go, like, even with a 1070 to buy one off the shelf. The other point is that the computer that we're salvaging a lot of the parts off to go into this new machine. Right. That's what's in there. Ah. So after, and we're basically doing an upgrade on this machine. And when it's done, it's not going to get tore apart and put back on the shelf, similar to what my machine will eventually do. Okay, so we didn't want to tie up one of the machines we're still using on the test bench. Exactly. I totally get it. Yeah, much like the X299 discussion we had earlier. You know, right, there's right. there's certain hardware that I can use, and there's certain hardware that is free to be um, redistributed, and there's stuff that's off limits until the reviews are done. No, absolutely. So we got two different builds, and they are targeted, it sounds like it, kind of two different levels there. So yours is, I would say, more of an enthusiast, almost an extreme build. And 
I'm I'm really feeling like your second one is really close to being a, uh, a mid range or what we call the sweet spot, a uh, a a budget friendly gaming PC. Yeah, well, I would say budget friendly is kind of a loose term. I mean, because well, some of the components we had to buy, mm-hmm. you know, it came to eight hundred dollars for some of that stuff that we had to buy for that machine specifically. Well, I think that we've been saying though for a while that if you're upgrading your PC. And this has become less true because of video cards, but it used to be what we would recommend you're going to spend about $800 to upgrade your core components. Exactly. And now that used to include the video card. <laughs> yeah. And sadly it doesn't, but that makes a good a good point because you are picking, I think, a faster processor than I would normally recommend. We're going with the Core i7, the 8700, which is a six core with hyper threading. So we got 12 threads. Mm-hmm which ironically is the same amount of threads as my main machine, which is a X79 Dark with a Ivy Bridge processor. So that's a six core processor with hyper threading, quad channel memory, blah, blah, blah. But you know, now we get that in the retail market, you know, the downstream stuff. So now we have quite a lot of processing power, you know, thanks to Ryzen, right? And um, the price was not much different than buying a KB Lake you know, the only thing we would have saved by using some KB Lake hardware that I had on the shelf was the $200 for the motherboard. Yeah, and to be fair, that's a little bit more of a future-proof decision, I think, too, mm-hmm. because that's going to give you a little bit longer legs. And I know that this machine will also do a little bit of work for a living. It's not just a gaming PC. Right, it's so, going to stay together. So great reason to jump up to get the hyper-threading especially. Let's see, some of the other design decisions that went into it. Power supply. You oh, know, yeah. I mentioned that I was just copying the power or taking the power supply out of the old machine and putting it into this one. Again, I have 1,200 waters that we could drop in there, but that machine doesn't need a 1,200 watt. The whole reason I'm using one is so I can show it off. I mean, you'll be able to see that C, that power, not CPU, that power supply from the back side of the Evolve because that slot is open underneath the power supply shroud. So I can show off the fact that I have a 1,200 watt platinum in there. Um, You'll be able to see the video card. You'll be able to see the two hard drives. So it's going to be kind of showy, but it's also conservative in that I'm not lighting it up with RGB LED. Yeah, it sounds like you're going to have a lot of competition for that in the neighborhood. So yeah. I think you'll stand out just for kind of counterculturally going mm-hmm. against the RGB trend that we're starting to see more and more. Yep. And I know we've talked a lot about that too. And I have reluctantly embraced the RGB with the primary function of building a very showy machine, as we've talked about before. The last LAN party, we were parked over by the window, and we had looky loos. They were just walking by, you know, coming back from the bar, walking by and seeing all these lights. You know, one, there's a bunch of people in this building that's supposed to be closed. And here they see this machine with just these circles of lights going around, and it's mesmerizing, really. I, I think our audience is maybe a little spoiled because this has become more norm, but you forget sometimes how many people are only just really a step beyond the old beige boxes, right? Yeah. Dells and HPs and have maybe seen some of these boutique builds, but the custom builds that are happening today with custom paint and custom lighting are still foreign to most people. I think it's a good majority of people, really. Um, you look on you know, some of the Reddit threads, I like go through there and chuckle sometimes. They're like, uh, I deleted my processor, and now there's this glue line around the CPU. They don't know how CPUs are put together. And it's like, well, what does this mean, right? To me, that's kind of second nature, because we saw uh, Pentium 3s and the Athlon XPs, where you could see the core all the time. That's the processors we grew up with. We know how they got together, but when the lid's on there, you don't see that. So it's just amazing how there's a generational gap that I thought would be perpetual to the point where people would have the same amount of knowledge going forward. We have this cell phone generation as well. They've never seen a PC. They just have their phone. Yeah. You walk by and you see this dazzling box of lights in custom paint, which they don't know about. And some crazy fans that are just going around in circles, you know, with the lights and whatnot, you know, that's like seeing a supercar when you live on a farm. Absolutely. Well, and that means it's served its purpose, right? Exactly. We we want people to come talk to us about our machines. We want them to talk about overclocking, and we hope that they take enough an interest that maybe they stick around like you have out there. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, and you spoke of overclocking. That's one thing that I do at the Boise Land. I do a little show. What was it? Two land parties ago, I did dry ice overclocking on a Haswell machine. 
you know, and this was one processor I knew ran six gigahertz on LN2. I was going 5.5 on dry ice. It was actually really fun. It was something that nobody had ever seen before. And I had people that were standing around for two hours watching me just drop dry ice in there and run a <laughs> benchmark. It is kind of cool. Yeah. And this LAN party, I'm planning to do liquid nitrogen. Of course, by the time you hear this podcast, it'll have already happened or not happened, depending on schedule and whatnot. But that's something that nobody has really ever seen, in, at least in this area. So we've talked, I think, a lot about the builds. Is there anything else at the land party that you're looking forward to? Why, why land parties? Why land parties? Well, they're fun. We've talked about this a lot, but the land parties are a great way for a site like Hardware Asylum to reach out to the community that's immediately accessible. And the LAN party is a perfect uh, vehicle for that. We have people that with common interests getting together. And the fact that we have showy builds allows people to approach us and ask us about it. You know, they come by, they're looking at it. You can get up, oh, hey, what do you think? And then you can start a conversation. Last LAN party, when we had some issues with your machine, I heard that there was people coming around looking at mine and foreign to them to the point where I thought it was just kind of a, a standard build. But the fact that it was in an evolved case with tempered glass side panels and the cable routing was done in such a way that you couldn't see the cables and you see hard drives laying off to the side. You know, to me, that seems second nature, but a lot of other people have never seen that before. So I think uh, it's important to note that land parties are definitely one of the few ways that we still get together and socialize enthusiast computers in general. And we've become a very online society. Yes. So hopefully you'll get a chance to hear us talk about how well that land party went when you tune in next week. And until then, if you have questions or comments about these two builds or anything that you're building out there, drop us a note at hardwareasylum.com. For more information on the topics discussed in this podcast, please consult our show notes on hardwareasylum.com. Stay up to date on the latest at Hardware Asylum by subscribing to our RSS. Follow us on Twitter or like us on Facebook. This has been a Ninja Lane production, copyright 2018. Thanks for listening.